It is Harvard astrophysicist Dr. Avi Loeb, who joins us now. Earlier this week, he suggested that uh, Earthlings ought to schedule their vacation quickly because we may not have much time left here. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Uh, just briefly, I did I did not graduate from high school, so if you could, you may have to speak layman at times this morning on the program. Well, that's who I am. That, uh, that, okay. Yeah, I can speak that way. Okay, very good. Uh, now, you and others in your field have identified this sp space object, uh, 3i Atlas. Am I correct about that? Yes, um, it's uh, the third interstellar object uh, that was discovered over the past decade. Uh, interstellar means that it came from outside the solar system. So it's just like finding an object in your backyard that came from the street. Okay, this one though, is it, it, apparently uh, is not acting like uh, a normal interstellar object. Am I correct about that? Well, yeah, it shows uh, some uh, weird properties. Uh, it's very big. Uh, it's at least a thousand times more massive than the previous two that we uh, had. Uh, it also uh, moves along the uh, plane of the planets around the sun. So all the planets are sitting in the same plane and moving around the sun. And this one comes in exactly in that plane within five degrees. And the chance of that happening at random is really small. It's one in 500. So then uh, the question arises as to whether uh, this uh, trajectory that it follows was designed mm. by some intelligence. Mm. Mm. So a designed uh, uh, the plan of the, the uh, of of uh, of attack, or or perhaps uh, they come in peace. I don't I don't know which it is. Well, that's a, that's a good question. When you go on a blind date and you see your dating partner on the other side, the f the first question is whether that uh, one is uh, friendly or it may be a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> the the prediction was that it was going this this object was going to go behind the sun on Tuesday and that was going to help propel it, it from what I've read this is what and I I'm not a yes it's I'm, a maneuver it's some sort of a maneuver correct yes. but then but then you're saying yeah. 33 gigawatts how fast actually is that and how could some object actually land on earth and not cause mass chaos yeah so this object is very big it's the size of Manhattan Island um, it weighs uh, 33 billion tons so it's it's really a massive object uh, not not much smaller than the asteroid that killed the dinosaur 66 million years ago and uh, it's moving at uh, 60 kilometers per second you know uh, on saturday i'm attending a nascar car race uh, in california uh, because one of the racers decided to put my image together with the image of this uh, interstellar object uh, 3i atlas to put it on his on the hood of his car mm. uh, and i told him your car is moving at least 600 times slower than uh, 3i atlas so it's really fast it's it's uh, traversing a distance that a car makes in an hour it does it in one second um and so um so it, it's moving fast and um, the question is, will it maneuver? Because it's coming uh, right now. It's on the opposite side of the sun relative to where Earth is. So we can't look at, we can't see it. If you look at the sun during the daytime, just imagine the 3A Atlas is flying behind it right now. And then um, uh, perhaps that was for a reason. So we, we won't be able to see if it does a maneuver. Oh. Um, and this is this is the best time for it to do a maneuver because it's uh, in a week it will come closest to the sun and um, it would move uh, at the fastest speed and if you want to uh, fire an engine and get as much uh, boost as a result of your engine the best time to do it is when you are closest to a massive object like the sun uh, and that's what we do with spacecraft um, it's called gravitational assist by by the sun and uh, so we have to wait and see if it changes course or if it releases any mini probes you know if it's a mothership that continues along its course but just uh, sends out probes to the various planets that would also be uh, very impactful and on our future now uh, the reason we need to consider that i mean maybe the probability is small that 
you know, maybe it's just a natural object, just a rock. But um, uh, the implications would be huge. So this is called the black swan event, you know, when uh, intelligence agencies have to deal with uh, risks. They often consider very seriously events that have a low probability, but just because they have a huge impact on, on, on society. Is, is it accurate that because I see things that NASA is has gone into some sort of uh, uh, emergency mode, prep mode or something like that? Do you have any information about that? Not emergency. They're currently shut down because of the government shutdown. And they had a camera um, orbiting uh, uh, Mars um, that uh, uh, took a very high resolution image of 3A Atlas with uh, 30 kilometers per pixel resolution. Uh, it did that on October 2nd, and that was the day after the government shut down, so we haven't seen the data. And I very much would like to see this image because, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yes. Uh, and uh, But uh, yesterday uh, there was an announcement by uh, an organization called the uh, International Asteroid Warning uh, Network right. um, that uh, uh, as a matter of uh, planetary defense, this is an organization related to the United Nations. And I actually wrote an, a white paper to the United Nations encouraging them to, to get involved. So they will now uh, have a campaign observing this object between November 27th and uh, January 27th so that we can get the most information about it. Now, what about those naysayers, doctor, who say this is just a comet or this is just an asteroid? Why are we scaring everybody about an alien mothership? Well, we are not scaring everybody. We just need to be aware that it's a possibility because we launched um, technological equipment to space. We have a spacecraft out there. So we know that it's not only rocks uh, that uh, populate the solar system. We have a lot of space trash that we put out there. Uh, and if we did it over the past 50 years, someone else might have done it. We may have a neighbor and we might find, uh, you know, a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor in our backyard. <laughs> so we just need to watch it. So wait, this we need to be... watch it and, and make, uh, you know, it's a matter of uh, just being cautious and, and, yeah. and checking. Uh, and, and the fact that this object is weird, that it has uh, eight anomalies and I, I listed them uh, on medium.com, I write uh, an update about this yeah. uh, object every few days, and you can read it there. Doctor, so it could be, excuse me, Curtis, quickly, this could be just 33 billion pounds of alien trash, which is uh, which they released <laughs> in space. Well, if it's, if it's trash, we shouldn't really worry too much. It would be interesting to check what, what it includes, you know, just like checking if there is any letter in the trash of your neighbor. But, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, what what should be of concern is if it's a functional uh, device, if, if it, it's alien technology that could pose a threat. And uh, obviously, no no politician will uh, do anything about it until the first encounter. You know, once we identify a piece of equipment that was, was extraterrestrial, then after that, everything will change. And uh, uh, so we we you know we can be blind and not look up. Uh, that's what the dinosaurs did. They didn't care much about the sky, and they're not around anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, I, <laughs> what is the most common misconception by us regular morons about our planets? Oh. Well, the, the, it's not morons. I mean, I would say it, it, it's most uh, people in academia. Uh, they uh, believe that uh, uh, we are the most intelligent thing that ever happened since the Big Bang, you know, that 13.8 billion years ago. And, um, you know, they, they call uh, the possibility that we may have a neighbor as intelligent or more intelligent than we are, they call it an extraordinary claim. And I say it's a very ordinary claim because we see, you know, 100 billion uh, Earth-Sun uh, analogs, uh, systems just like the solar system. We see in the Milky Way galaxy, 100 billion of them. And, uh, you know, it's quite likely that things like us existed you know, for billions of years yeah. uh, around other stars. So, so we should be, you know, when we uh, when we ask, uh, are we alone? You know, that's a question that every lonely person asks. And what right. you tell a lonely person is, you know, if you want to find a partner, you should uh, be proactive. Uh, don't think that you are so attractive that everyone will come to you. You need to to search for them. Can you predict mm -hmm. with the path that this is on what part of the world it could collide with? 
oh, if we knew that it's approaching the Earth, then we could, uh, but uh, just keep in mind that any technological object can maneuver and you can't really forecast. It depends on the intent uh, as to how it, it will uh, move. And uh, the point is we need to monitor it just to make sure that there is nothing uh, you know, uh, no sign. If it continues along the current path, it will not cross the Earth. It, it's uh, passing f far from Earth, and the closest it will get to Earth will be on December 19th, um, uh, just a week before Christmas. And uh, at, at that point, it will be uh, still quite far, uh, about uh, 250 million kilometers from Earth. But we don't know because they are they're, they're very sneakily hiding behind the sun mm. the aliens that's what exactly really exactly that's right. that that's the key right. that's why right. next week you know it's a week before uh, you know it, it's just around the time of halloween right. when it will be uh, it will be closest to the sun so we have to watch out L last one from me uh, for those who are concerned uh, about meeting our uh, interplanetary neighbors uh, what uh -huh. is what is your fear level one to ten? What, well, how? how ah, yeah. So in fact, uh, I defined the scale that is now called the Loeb scale, which after my last name, that zero means a natural object, ten means a technological object, and I gave it a four at this okay. point. So it is a four. It's a four as uh, on a scale of one to ten, it being a technological object from from uh, aliens out there. Yes, doctor. I I just I have so many questions, and I if I had worked harder, maybe I could have gotten to one of your classes. But oh well. Um, <laughs> the what happened with the pyramids? If you had to guess, who built them? How were they built? Well, that's an excellent question. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we don't have that information. And it's quite possible that on Earth there were civilizations that were very sophisticated or they had a visit uh, by, by another, you know, by aliens that helped them. Uh, we, it's just not documented well enough. We can't tell. So um, the best we can do is just look at the sky and check if there is any evidence for anything out there. You know, that I take the approach of a kid, you know, that uh, instead of listening to stories uh, of, of, of the adults in the room, you know, we have stories from religions, we have stories from historians. I don't care about these stories. I don't care about the past. I just want to see if there is something right now around us that would indicate that. You know, okay. and, and that we can do. We can look at the sky. We can mm. all do that. You are recommending, though, still that we use our vacation days uh, within the next week, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, uh, the, you know, the future can be very different. I see it as an opportunity, like any blind date, you know. It could make us better if we realize that someone else was more accomplished, you know, like... Uh, and and it's, I, I was jogging this morning at the, before sunrise, and it's just beautiful. If you look at the sky, you know, just look up. That's, that's all I'm saying. Don't uh, focus. Because if you read the news every day, you get depressed yes. um, about uh, people engaging in conflicts and thinking very small term. And, um, you know, the, the universe is far more exciting. Doctor, I don't want to get too personal, but we have a lot of ladies who listen to the show, and, and you've offered a lot of dating analogies. Are are you are you are you solo dolo available for the ladies who who, uh, who might go brain first over over a parent? <laughs> well, my wife uh, tells me not to offer any expertise about dating, but uh, I cannot uh, you know resist that. But uh, uh, my my advice to anyone that goes on a blind date is first observe the other side before you have any opinion before you say anything, and uh, this is the principle that I think we should apply to an encounter with. Uh, alien technology we just want to observe it see what it's capable to do of doing uh, uh, try to figure out the intent before we say anything because you know we just don't know what what will come uh, from the other side which celebrity in the world do you think is most likely an alien <laughs> <laughs> no i think they're all um, uh, terrestrial okay I, i've met many of them actually just a few months ago and they were quite interested in the kind of things I'm doing, and but um, yeah, and and also if you you are interested in, in more details, uh, in in uh, tomorrow I'm I have a podcast with uh, Joe Rogan, and uh, oh. it should appear over the weekend, so you I might mean, uh, uh, want. I scooped doctor. Rogan. Look at that, Greg. Yeah, that's pretty good, Curtis. I mean, it was Do your idea. Sorry, doctor. Doctor, have have you ever met fellow 
astrophysicist Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, what do you well, think about went, the Blue uh, Origin? Human, that was she weird. Went, um, she went to quote unquote space just for a few minutes. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, anyway, yeah. Well, uh, the latest I heard um, about her was uh, the the relationship she has with uh, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, Doc. We lo- honestly, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. I I, I would have I, paid attention in these I, classes if really, this was my professor. I know, I know. You are it's, so it's good. Was, would you like to call some socks games on EEI? Any on. chance one of these aliens could play wide receiver? That's all I care about. <laughs> By the way, I'm very much into sports, if, right. if, uh, but you didn't ask me anything about that. And next time, you can ask me about that. Is that on your secret profile on <laughs> Tinder? Jesus I don't, have, I don't have any social media <laughs> foot, footprint. Uh, oh, really? No. I, 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 I oh, really enjoy strange. sports. You don't have any social media? You would crush on TikTok. No. Mm. Wow. Nothing. I have but, nothing. But, uh, the, but the interest, I'm sure the interest in this is over the top. When pe- like, Oh, it, yeah, because, um, you know, every uh, essay that I post on medium.com is now read by 50 to 100,000 people. Wow. And it takes five minutes for them to read it. So, you know, it's not like a tweet that takes a few seconds. So I'm really surprised by how much interest there is in this. He we could would, be an alien spy. Could be. We are. We would. We would. We would love, love to have you on again, if that's okay, Doctor. As this, as this, sure. as this continues. Sure. Especially, especially if we figure out that we are not alone, I, I'll be glad to to explain. Okay, Doctor Avi Loeb. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. Beat the beat the.